Ah, beautiful Seattle day. Good day for a, a new project. As with any good project, we're gonna start by deleting Overwatch from my desktop. <sighs> CD documents. CD's nuts. Terminal, npm, install, create, react. I kid, I used Vue for the front end this time, but we're gonna get into that in just a moment. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. Yes, I'm unfortunately still unemployed. Uh, I don't think I've been taking this as seriously as I should have been dropping the ball on a couple final rounds. Clearly something needs to change. In that endeavor, I decided to take some tech stacks from some job interviews that were really intriguing to me. Uh, namely, they were, one was full stack, one was a backend role, Nest.js and uh, Golang, which is why you're gonna see me change uh, backend languages and frameworks. Here is a devlog, I guess, for Finite Vault, one of four features for something called Infinite Game. Which, yeah, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed leave a comment if there's things you'd suggest or, or what you'd want to see as a viewer. I'll be back for some commentary throughout the video, nonetheless. All right, we got some sick stuff happening. Do we really though? I, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. The backend's now in JavaScript. I have two folders for it. <laughs> one for Go, one for JavaScript. There's just job stuff that I would want to I want to polish up on. So I'm using Nest.js for the backend now. Pretty much, I thought that the backend only needed the OAuth stuff. Apparently you have to send requests from the browser, which makes sense now that I think about it, but previously I did not think about it. The front end was almost easier because you have there's a there's a library called view 3 google login which gives you this fancy looking thing it, i know this doesn't look good by the way okay i click on one email and look at that we have a client id love it we have a client id with an underscore this time okay i don't know the difference just real quick if you click the whatever, mark real simple this is their daily increment and then file expense pops it up here For, wow i just realized i put high as a, <laughs> i just made this not a number <laughs> Validate your inputs, kids. All right. We're up on Cloudflare pages, boys. <laughs> it looks so bad. Obviously, the buttons are not working because there's no backend to communicate with. I'm using this account for this uh, database. If we go in, we should see one user. And look at that. We have a user. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know, pretty cool. So on the backend, when I first logged in, uh, but it does say new user. How OAuth works is kind of cool. It, it gives you a lot of information. So you get email, you get name. Pop this bad boy back in here. Let's go ahead and sign in. Uh, oh, so, okay, sick. That worked. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so as long as you know what the type is on the back end, I, you know, pull it into your own type on the front end, SLA. Trigger login flow, great. Just because I want to be able to change their username. I don't want it to have to be their Google name. Not that the username like means much. It's just like when you sign in and you get to here, Maybe it'll use your name. It doesn't matter. It's a to-do for a reason. Increment the balance. I'm going to make this. I, I got to make all the backend routes, which I think would be okay. So clearly I'm still in JavaScript land here. Nest.js. Uh, pretty much for this app, I don't want to have to worry about password encryption or anything. And I don't want people to have to worry about a new login. So I figured why not teach myself a new skill uh, and learn how OAuth works. And it was really satisfying kind of just having this moment of like, oh, it works. And then really understanding how it works. And then I just, for fun, I kind of wanted to do ProtonMail because the Google login had a lot of boilerplate done for you. So ProtonMail kind of went one level deeper in terms of really passing in the callback URL and making the functions on both the front and the back end. We're gonna jump into just some clips on me doing the Proton route and then uh, you'll see me we'll switch over to, to Golang. How to, f how to, f what? Oh, did you not know this about me? I thought that was like my, <laughs> the one thing people know about me. <laughs> I was really slacking at the end there. Ugh. Darn. I thought there was double authentication happening. And then that sends it to the service again and says, I want information of the person that this token connects to. I don't need any other verification though, because I've already verified that it's good. And I'm gonna call for my mom. So much is happening right now. Okay, but it's triggering okay. It, and they brought us right back. So the, the mid component's not completely necessary. And then it's just on the back end, we need this. And look at that, we got the token. Now, if I click sign with Proton or simple login, it brings you here. It's kind of cool because you can choose a certain like fake name and Proton simple login will keep that for you forever. And because I'm doing this by email, you obviously don't want to lose that. Whatever, you know, whatever alias you want. I think that's super cool. And I'm actually glad I decided to support this kind of just incidentally. It redirects me back there. So I have, um, I have a bunch of to do's. I want to do a bunch of refactoring. I'm starting to see the puzzles coming together. I feel like this isn't very JavaScript-y. Every time I make a request, I'm gonna have to send along a token, which I don't hold on to. 
So if I refresh home, we do not hold on to the login state. So that's pretty much what's next. A good day's work ish. We're getting there. We're back with another little development update. I don't, I don't know. Have an interview tomorrow and the positions for a Golang position. So I decided that I would, the heart of this project is learning and, and I intended from the start to go back and forth between JavaScript and Go. So this is a back end and Go. I found this article from Ben Hoyt, uh, which for some reason sounds familiar and this format looks familiar, but I don't know what from. And so I used the Chi library and using that for routing. It's just, it's very simple. And I think with, with Go, one of the, the habits I've fallen into is just simplicity and, and clarity. Uh, having, you know, documentation, <laughs> because I don't want to have to change the front end. That would be so stupid. So having actual documentation and, and really it's forcing me to use Postman the way Postman is meant to be used as well. Health check just sends Ohio gozaimasu because I don't know why not. And then, you know, just set up some basic routing. I was breaking things and putting them back together. No support for Google login yet. 500 errors. And I'm also trying to use this as an opportunity to <clears throat> get better with this. No support for Google login yet. And <laughs> then we still get ka-chow! It's a new day. I've somewhat given up on this green screen bit, but for my next act, we're getting into the OAuth stuff on the Golang backend. And I had to work through some logic stuff about the JWT. I was confused about how you'd, you know, verify a JWT without having to hold on to every single one yourself. You know, I don't want to hold on to session data. I want this all to be sessionless. Theory, I want the whole thing to be a zero trust system just because it can be as I continue building this out. But the more I edit this devlog, the more I realize that a lot of this is going to be refactored. We're going to jump into some more ghost stuff and just kind of, you know, skip through some time now. Okay, what do you know? Uh, it actually, it, it, I you know, had to trigger on the front end to get the token, but it worked. Throw in this token value. These will expire soon enough. So expires in whatever, an hour. Poopy little front end here. Posture check for myself real quick. Posture check. The whole principle of infinite game the app is for you to create rules and you have to also enforce them, which is the hard part. The game is all about being played. You're not trying to win or lose. You don't lose if you get a balance of zero. It's a, I'm not trying to foster a, oh no, game over. If balance is zero, can't use this anymore. Like if you lose a streak, how likely are you really to go back and revisit that streak, you know? Okay. This was a lot easier than I guess I thought it would be for some reason. It's just looking at the docs a lot. <laughs> so yeah, we create a web token. Uh, we have claims of email because this is, you know, I don't want to keep providing the username for the front end. That's not reliable. So we'll just embed it within the token. Stupid little dev way, but I created a little a test thing. So it creates something for an email. Um, I didn't want to have to keep using the browser. This is the interesting part. You're assigned a key. What's nice about this is that my previous, one of my previous problems was I was like, well, how do I hold on to session data? How do I, you know, if a, if a token is in a dictionary on the server, then it's valid, then it's a valid token. Well, put the email in the JSON web token and you said an expiration date, you use time. Oh my God, I haven't looked at view in so long. <laughs> um, click trigger test. Oh, I need to store the token in, in a session. It'd be really cool if I had like already set this up in the past when I was building out the state. I already set this up. <laughs> cool. Okay, so all I need to do is start in the session. Never mind. <laughs> we are fully embracing this green screen bit at this point. I forgot I said that. Oh, this is a weird day to edit. Setting up the MongoDB was not difficult. I just had to kind of look at the driver docs to, to fly through it. Similar code flow to the JS stuff, but there's not as much integration for schema and stuff. Like there's no mongoose for Go, I guess. User stuff. We were, just, we're inserting and then we're returning this thing that we made because the balance is always going to be zero. The email is always going to be the email and the name is always going to be the default name that we got from the OAuth stuff. Mongo uses BSON, which I guess is binary representation of JSON. Makes sense, whatever. Um, and we're decoding it straight into user, which I guess just works. So that's what we're going to find out. So I'm going to crack open Postman. I'm going to move me over here. We hit login. Looking at our console, because actually that's what I'm working with. Finitevault.shrank, that's not me. So the database is called test. This, I've named this wrong. This user data appears wrongly named. No, user data is a collection. What did I do? Yeah, so I had a little lack of fundamental understanding of, of Mongo's naming. So that threw me off for a second. The database setup pretty much worked first try. So I'll show a clip of that. And then I get into some design stuff because I realized I wanted the front end to actually look a little better. A usable front end is probably a pretty good thing. Oh, that's hella awkward. Create a new user. Let's send it again. And we get user info. 
It all worked. It just works. It, it's just that easy. There's my off token, maybe. <laughs> Come on, go fetch him. Go like sides. Done. I'm gonna go draw, and then I have to do a take home. I look back at this devlog and I, it's hard because it's really weird for me to post this when it's clearly taken me a month and a half to do what I consider a very, very minimal amount of work. Um, I've been unemployed for a few months now and I figured I would be doing a lot more with my time and I've been jumping around a lot and I think one of the most important things I've found is to switch between leisure activities. You know, I'm, I'm trying to treat Infinite Game as work now and doing things like drawing uh, is really helpful. I'm training for races that are happening this weekend. So the day after this <laughs> video goes up in theory, um, I do, you know, martial arts and I've been doing so many, you know, half a dozen other things. And I find that it's so important to keep up with those things. And so I just wanted to show some drawing and also just, I don't know, not make an excuse, but I really want to ramp up my time on Infinite Game. And, and it's, a, it's a work in progress, you know, tracking those consecutive days worked for some reason is, it's kind of helping me though, it's at zero as I make this voiceover, but trying to play the infinite game. Do things and get things done as a consequence, not focusing on getting things done. But anyway, that's enough of that. Doesn't really make sense. Back to development. See, I love Trello. If my hurdle, which it is, my biggest hurdle is starting, right? So the biggest solution to that hurdle is knowing where I can pick up right off the bat. Now, what I'm gonna celebrate is 15 insertions and this is just, good job, Mark. You're a software engineer. Like this is what you were supposed to do. All I gotta do is take this test route uh, and yoink it pretty much. Don't need it at all. Look at that. Increment button working. If I go to home, obviously it's gonna, we can see it logging in user through Proton with this token. Uh, and then I actually did work on the front end. Nothing too much. The only thing I did, the only thing different I did, um, when we go ahead and log in, and then we can see this uh, local storage thing pops in and that's the user. So now if I refresh the page, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it's not like I did that much work, but I also, I want to draw before jujitsu and my eyes need to get off the screen. I made some designs, some really crappy designs, but the, I got the author out and stuff working that's pushed in, but uh, I like this like naturey wood vibe. That's kind of what I'm thinking at least. You can file a new expense and then this just shows, you know, the color differences when you're filing an expense. I think when you click on an expense, we'll have a, you know, more colorful and we'll expand the whole thing. And, and then there's a little setting icon. The main reason I wanted a setting was because I want to show the daily number. I want everyone to know what their daily number is. I'll let this be user chosen. I think sending it based on location is dicey because you can have someone on VPS. And if someone's like temporarily somewhere else, I don't want to have to, there's just weird things that can happen. This whole thing is based on <laughs> your own discipline like you don't have to file any expenses i like i think it's, it's safe to say i really like this look however when i say i really like it i am being very very emphatic on the like choice of adjective there's something off something is off or like my brain is correcting this but it's like there's something off like maybe it just needs to be bigger in my in my brain you got to remember to always look at what you make from different perspectives. And just in case you use the color brown to make a brush stroke, don't do that. Okay, I think I know what I wanna do though. So we're gonna do color overlay and then I'm gonna go and for some reason, this is what I just see in my mind. I don't really know if it makes sense, but it kinda works. <laughs> it looks like a... <laughs> that is not wood. That ain't wood. Would doing a different texture even help? God, that is so funny. The color still. If I look at this again, is it gonna. Yeah, it's just forever associated with poop in my head now. Make it green. Just put some opacity on. Just don't. Anything but brown. Uh, for the week, it's Wednesday right now, it's 4, 12 p.m. But yeah, the front end, it looks better. It, I've designed worse, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> Got rid of the nice little border. This is my balance and unemployment. If we just, let's just recap. You open finite vault and voila. I don't wanna focus that much on the front end right now. However, I did want it to look a little better. So if we exit that, we got the full desktop version, nice and centered, which of course you can't see because I'm a fool. We sign with Proton. We This is all live from freaking Mongo. We see the logins there, cool. And then <laughs> this sort of works. 
20.41, uh, new camera for the devlog. These are not <clears throat> sanitized at the moment. Uh, I should do that. But at the end of the day, you can never really trust the front end. So uh, that's about it. I think it looks better. I like the brush stroke, it adds a little bit to it. I don't think the main container needs to be anything special. And just taking a look at the roadmap, I'm probably gonna end up cutting all this out in post. JavaScript doesn't have a good standard library. It's constantly memed on. And the fact that there's no standard for what a number is, oh, it sent me. So I streamed a lot of this development, right? And so this is a an hour and a half long clip. Most of this was spent on trying to validate what was in the input box, like the dollar box that you see up here. <laughs> and I was suffering because I was trying to not overcomplicate the view code and I was trying not to just look up a solution with AI. Eventually I did and it still gave me garbage. Cause I thought, I know the React code, I know how to validate that, but I was getting some complexity with the, the view model binding, but I was losing my mind. A while ago, I made a devlog on making a Minecraft server and this computer that you see in the background runs that Minecraft server. And I was like, what if I self-hosted the backend for this instead of getting a digital ocean droplet? And so then I kind of procrastinated making the actual app and figured all that out. And I found something called Coolify, which was kind of cool. I haven't worked on it as much this last week and a half, which is unfortunate. Just a, a shifting tide of, of vibes. We'll put it that way. I did the daily increment. Uh, I'm not going to test it. I'm going to go ahead and just work on transaction stuff. It's Friday. There's effectively just a bunch of functions to get specific user information. So get the balance. It's not a concern now, but grouping these up is ideal. With squeal, you know, you can do some calculations in your query itself in a way. And then we update the days since last update by the user daily increment. I'm curious what people would think about, you know, should you check in every day? I think it should be an optional thing. Being your own game master, you, you know, there should be some limitations, but you know, that difficulty is up to you. But the problem is we're updating the user balance, we're getting all the user data, um, and then we're updating the last check-in. These, this check-in and update should absolutely be one. The fact, if this fails, then the balance updating doesn't fail, like that doesn't make sense to me. I'm pushing off tests, which is kind of shitty to do. I want to finish Finite Vault, and then I want to make this Infinity game. I also have to do Wani Kani. Yeah, I'm done, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of all there, I guess. A lot of duplicate code has been written. I think it's logical. Getting all the transactions. This is the get request that we hit. Passing in the email for now. I need to pull out the toki. That's all to do. And then to get all the transactions, we go to get all transactions. Shocker, I know. I finished what I needed to do for the week, pretty much. And so tomorrow, uh, you know what's I did it in a day. I did what I wanted to get out of the way this week in a day. I mean, two days, technically. And it took me three hours. <laughs> Like, I'm doing a lot of different stuff, but it's just like, keep iterating and getting better. I'm actually looking forward to the refactor. It'll be a realm of possibility. I'm probably gonna have to tweak the back end tomorrow with the front end, so we'll see. I'm gonna put my head down for a little bit on this project and get Finite Vault just deployed, just so I can check it off. I just started working on this as my own thing. I started working on the game with a friend. We're, we're doing some prototypes now. I don't know if I'll make devlogs about that. We'll see. Gonna be making more videos. I'm kind of throwing myself more stuff in a more serious manner, uh, just to add some of my life to this channel, I guess. I'm not trying to make any promises, but you know, I, I kind of need to take this more seriously. In all reality, I didn't think I was gonna be unemployed for this. This long and I think part of it's the industry uh, I think a large part of it's me I could absolutely have done better in different interviews and you know a big part of this project is just working with the internal deadlines is tough and that's a whole other mental battle that's happening right now but building something of my own from the ground up and doing it amongst training for a jiu-jitsu competition amongst trying to get better at drawing amongst running and spartan races and a half a dozen other things like i kind of talked about earlier but anyway thanks so much for watching more to come absolutely i do enjoy doing this once i can force myself to get started and wrangle my focus i will go back to pass me to end it off that's all <laughs>